Hello and welcome to a brand new edition of Inside Out on the Road, a show where we focus on individual stocks. With in-depth analysis, we deep dive into financials and also tell you about the key risk and triggers going forward. But let's get straight to the first stock today. My colleague Sonal traveled to Nasik to get us this very special deep dive on ABB India. Inside Out is in ABB India's green factory at Nasik and here we are to understand everything about ABB India's business, the strategies and a lot more. But first up about the company, it is a play on the CapEx cycle in the country and it is a company which provides global technology solutions for products and services as well. It is a 75% owned subsidiary of ABB Limited, which is a Swedish-Swiss multinational. The company has four segments. The first one is electrification, there's motion, process automation, robotics and discrete automation. What are they really? We'll understand more in a bit, but let's talk about the financials first. Calendar 2023 was really strong for them. They surpassed their guidance of 10,000 crore rupees in terms of revenues to come in at 10,446 crore rupees. This number has been increasing. In fact, in terms of margins, they have grown from levels of 8.5% in 2021 to levels of around 14% in 2023. Profits have also increased manifold from 2021 levels of 532 crore rupees. Now it is sitting on profits of around 1250 crore rupees. The balance sheet is healthy as well with cash and books of around 4700 crore rupees. But what are the plans with the cash in the books? What are the strategies of the management and how do they see growth from here on? And what are the internals really looking like? We'll know that and a lot more, but let's go and speak to the management of the company. Okay, as promised, it's time to take a deep dive into the business of ABB India. I have with me the managing director of the company, Mr. Sanjeev Sharma, in the factory with me. Thank you so much for joining us today and speaking to CNBC TV 18. And you know, while we talk about the theme being CapEx heavy and everything CapEx right now, before we talk about that theme, I want to understand and for you to simplify the business of ABB India. There's so many things. What is the ABB way? First of all, uh, Sonal, welcome to ABB in Nashik plant. Uh, thanks for uh, you know coming here. Uh, ABB as a company, uh, we are organized in four verticals, and each vertical has a deep impact in Indian India of today. In terms of when we are constructing, uh, you know, different infrastructures, uh, developing the industry, uh, you know, developing the automation in for the higher productivity. So ABB play a big role in the electrification and the automation of our customers. Now in these four verticals, we have electrification is one theme. Second theme is motion. Third is process automation. And fourth is robotics and automation. Electrification is all about providing, providing power to infrastructure projects, cities, uh, then buildings, and all the other uh, you know, uh, associated uh, electrification and automation that goes in it to get the most en energy efficient uh, solution. Motion is all about energy efficiency, wherein we have motors and drives. In any industry, motors consume a lot of uh, energy. So if you replace them with high energy efficiency motors and also couple them with thyristor drives, the customers gain a lot of uh, energy efficiency and their overall energy bill comes down. Plus, more energy efficient equipment you have, the customers have a lower green, greenhouse gas emission credentials. So that's the second part. The third is process industries, wherein you look into the core sector like oil and gas, uh, offshore uh, oil and gas, uh, uh, onshore oil and gas, then you have the petrochemical plants, refineries, uh, cement plants, aluminum industry, uh, steel plants, uh, pulp and paper, wow. all those industries which cater to, uh, to, the, to, the, to the market, uh, larger market. We, uh, we supply the process automation which leads to better productivity and better resource uh, optimization. Last but not the least, uh, robotics automation, especially in India now when the manufacturing is expanding, uh, be it in the automotive industry, electronics manufacturing, and also many other 
uh, subset uh, industries which are developing and which is looking for high quality, repetitive quality, and flexibility, how they want to organize their production. Robotics automation goes there and also is available 24 seven for them to make production, which is a flexible production. So that's our portfolio. Okay, that's a huge portfolio, but you know, I've been reading about the company and you're not satisfied with that, it seems. You want to cater to more products, more sectors. So tell me, things have changed a lot in last couple of years. We are talking about the CapEx theme. Which are some of the sectors where you will see maybe the biggest growth or which would be the sunrise sectors for the company? So our portfolio helps the uh, government spending as well as the private spending in that area. So as far as we are concerned, uh, uh, earlier, many years ago, there were only few market segments which were active and relevant in the country. Uh, but now, I would say, say about seven, eight years, about eight market segments were relevant for us. Today, there are, they have expanded to 23 market segments. So that means the market has become much more broad-based. And earlier, we used to do business mostly in the metro cities. But now, tier two and tier three cities, they, we have substantial business being done there. And, and there are different market segments which have a different growth rate. So there are new market segments which are growing at a 20% uh, rate, like renewables, data center, uh, you know, you have electronics manufacturing. So these are the segments which are new, relatively new, and adding to our uh, growth story. Uh, then we have the medium size, uh, uh, you know, kind of growth segments, which are, uh, I would say, growing 10 to 15 percent. That again makes a chunk. And the traditional market segment, which still are very attractive for us, uh, they are sub uh, 10 percent. But they, some of those market segments are now joining the growth story. And, uh, you know, we see much more volume uptake. And since we are in this country for a long period of time, uh, we have a good installed base in the core industry we continue to service them as well. So when you spoke about there are some new segments that have come by as well, in terms of your revenue split, how much would be coming from older sectors or you know the core sectors, how much is coming from the new sectors and would that change in the next two, three years? So, I, so yeah, I did that analysis and um, I must say that more than 50% is coming from new and the near new segments. Oh, wow, 50%. And are they coming at higher margins as well? Because we've seen that in your 2023 performance, margins have jumped and that seems to, uh, you know, make the street happy as well. So as far as the margin is concerned, it's the, uh, you know, kind of, uh, there are a number of factors involved. We did have a period wherein we had the supply chain disruption, we had the inflation period, and we also had a change of perception that the customers want to buy from uh, you know, the, from the suppliers who are more reliable and have a higher quality product. So I would say we are rightly priced and, uh, and those products are appreciated by the customer at that price point. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Uh, so would you say you have market leadership in a lot of the segments that you cater to? Mm -hmm. uh, what is the market share there? So as far as the, there are certain market segments wherein we could have 30% 30 per, 30 plus uh, market, uh, market share and there are uh, certain segment or products wherein which could be, which could be 10 to 12 percent and that's where we see we have a lot of runway to grow as we expand our portfolio we localize it when you localize it your cost also comes down you then are able to participate in a much broader market the market segments themselves are expanding and also the tier 2 or tier 3 series are expanding so so what we find is that all these effects then lead it to the performance that we So, you know, about. I was reading a report, correct me if I'm wrong, 60% of oil and gas produced in India is monitored by ABB, 65% of the cars manufactured in India are painted by ABB, and 90% of cement companies, they have ABB in operation. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, uh, let's talk about how much time does it take for you to execute an order? And is execution different in different segments? Which is, it, uh, which is the segment where it is the longest? Uh, you're absolutely right. So, especially in the projects business, if it could be in an oil and gas or in a mining industry or it could be a railways project, it can be as long as uh, one year to 18 months. But in product segment, uh, which is on the lower side, we have the MTO and MTS, M made to order, made to stores. These are easy to configure products. Uh, there the execution cycle could be as low as two months. You know, there are
there are so many segments that you said you will be catering to data centers. I have to ask about that because so many people have shown so much interest here. What's the addressable market here and what's making so, you so bullish here in terms of order book? How much will it be going forward? Data center as an example is a, you know, very reason everything in India is working is getting digitized. That has to be served by data centers. Mm. And uh, it has e-commerce on it. It has, uh, you know, public uh, good uh, transaction. Government is moving all their services. So uh, having seen what has happened in other com uh, countries, I think India is at the starting point of data center revolution. So there's an expanding uh, footprint of data centers across the country. And I think it has just started in the last few years. Uh, given what we have seen in other countries, it has a long way to go and it will only become larger. More power will be required. And uh, also government wants uh, Indian company as well as public data should be localized. So that has a, a good kind of a trend for it. So I think it's a plus billion dollar uh, business and uh, most of the large players, they like our technologies globally. And when they move in here, uh, you know, they continue to use ABB technology and we are catering to them as well as domestic players, they are using it effectively. So if you look into data centers, it's array of computers which are power hungry and we supply power to them. Okay. So when you talk about technology, how often would you have to invest in a new technology or get a new technology for any segment for that matter? And does it become a big part of your R&D uh, percentage in terms of expenses? So being part of ABB Group, which is uh, out there in the market for last 140 years, so we have deep-seated technologies already available, well proven in Europe or uh, you know in other parts of the world. So whenever a particular market segment comes and is ready for prime time, as we'll say, uh, you know, technology is available. All what we had to do is to bring it here, test it in Indian conditions, adapt it, localize it, bring it to the right price point, and the volumes in an Indian market, they don't disappoint. Oh, interesting. So, ABB India per se wouldn't have high R&D costs, that would mean, or that continues to we be... We are part of the global R&D mm. network. Okay. and we take benefit of that. Okay, so what does that mean in terms of royalty? Is it in high single digits for you? How much is it in terms of payment to ABB Global? Uh, I think it's within the norms that government and the uh, governance structures uh, you know, require. It's uh, uh, below below uh, 4%. Below 4%. And there are no talks of any, increasing, any increase there because I would say because with all MNCs, this is one uh, question that all shareholders have, right? Will the royalty increase because that goes away from their earnings? As far as the, this company is concerned, it's a board-led company, uh, Indian board-led company, and wherein uh, all the governance models uh, are well in place. And uh, whatever we pay for technology, if we have to develop all the technology from scratch in India, it will cost much, much more. So uh, what we are getting is access to proven technology, available, already being used in other parts of the world, and we are able to bring products very quick to the market. I think that's a big advantage to, uh, for being part of a multinational network and paying a kind of a small fee for access to that technology. No, makes sense. Uh, so you do have a substantial cash in your books as well, around 4,700 crore rupees. Uh, will you look at tapping markets for inorganic opportunity or do you think you're going to grow organically because there's so much already available in the market? So as I said that uh, globally, uh, our cash books are good also in India and our global CEO has given in part of our ABB way model empowerment to all our global divisions to look for small, medium size and large opportunities and integrated part of the business uh, if it creates a lot of value for the customer and also creates a lot of value for ABB and ABB shareholders. So, so that cash is available for inorganic opportunities. There's a good pipeline and we keep on going through it. Uh, it can happen that uh, ABB Group acquires something which has a large footprint in India, so it gets used there. In any case, we continue to use it for our organic expansion. What happens to margins in this case? You've seen around 14% margins in 2023. Say not the next two, three years. What is the margin band you would look at? Would you go to high double digits coming, uh, coming ahead? And uh, will it come in from newer projects? So as a, as a policy, we don't give future mm -hmm. outlook and projections. But uh, if you look into my past uh, commentary and also my CFOs, Commentary. What we do is we continue to focus on operational performance and operational synergies. And once you work on it in a diligent way, every quarter after quarter you continue to gain out of it. So one is you get the volume effect, 
Other is you get the operational efficiency effect, and also we have a lot of capacity available in terms of how we can quickly expand to cater to more market, because most of the plants that we have, we don't need to go for extra investment, we can just incrementally uh, you know, invest it. So since you are talking about expansion, since you are talking about new demand, will that continue to uh, make your working capital go higher as well? Is that something that we can expect? So we continue to work with our suppliers. So as we stabilize the supply chain as well as our production processes, we make uh, our suppliers participate in terms of outsourcing some of the work. So that eases out our networking capital. So there are certain businesses where our networking capital is negative. Yeah. So, so that's a well-rehearsed policy, but first we stabilize, we make it profitable, and then we for the, go for the growth for our business as well as with our suppliers. Okay, so I know you don't give forward-looking guidance, but in 2023, you've surpassed your guidance of revenues and you are that, that 10,400 crore mark. So 10,000 crores is a milestone. Uh, what next in, last, uh, in next five years? What's the plan? Will you be able to double it? Will you see revenues of around 15,000 crore rupees? Well, I can give you a simple equation. Uh, last year, we crossed, uh, uh, previous year, previous year, last year, we crossed 10,000 crores. This, in orders, and this year we have crossed 12,400 uh, crores. So that means there's a 23% jump you see there. Uh, and then our uh, backlog has expanded by 30%. Yeah. So if you take it forward and you take that same momentum and Indian market is still looking quite good and is becoming more and more broad-based, more sophisticated, I believe uh, we have every confidence to see that this journey continues. Last question before we end this conversation. Uh, we are talking about a lot of demand, a lot of triggers going forward. What, according to you, would be a big risk or a risk in the growth that we are seeing? Uh, I think at the moment, the market and the policy of the government for a large country like this is set up in a good way. Uh, I think uh, if everything domestic, it's less of a concern. But if you really look into the geopolitics uh, kind of uh, situation that is developing around the world, uh, that, that's an area of risk, which is not controlled by us locally. Uh, how that will shape up, I think that's something which you can consider as a risk uh, element. And how the, uh, what you call the interest rates uh, play out, but those are the things which one can watch out. But those are not the ones which you can influence. So mm. I think the attitude we have with our leadership is we always focus on what we can control. <laughs> and let's hope for the best. And if a situation develops, whether you have a very severe situation like COVID or some other disturbance, on that day, readjust and adapt and see how, what best you can do to continue to serve your customer. Because that should remain the focus that irrespective of what situation, there are a lot of customers out there who depend on us. We need to make sure we never drop that ball. So that's our mantra. Very interesting. That should be the mantra in life as well, right? Focus on what you can control, other things will take place. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. It was such an insightful conversation and hope to be speaking to you very soon again. And that's all about ABB India. But uh, do stay tuned. We'll come back with more for now. Back to you in the studios. Welcome back to Inside Out. Well, the stock on our Swatlight segment today is IMFA. The company is a leading fully integrated producer of value-added ferrochrome and sells approximately 2.5 lakh tons per annum. Their strength is their manufacturing complexes are backed by captive power generation and its own chrome ore mines, which are valid till 2049 and 2055. Ferrochrome is used in the production of stainless steel and the prospects for stainless steel have been looking up. South Africa is the largest producer of chrome ore, but is struggling on the power front, while China is the largest producer of ferrochrome, but gets part of its chrome ore requirement from South Africa. This in turn will support ferrochrome prices. Additionally, chrome ore supply, there is a bit of a shortage here in the domestic market. So that's what's kept ferrochrome prices firm in India as well. Now, though IMFA sells majority of their production in the export market as of now, the company could possibly look at selling its ferrochrome in the domestic market in the time to come. This, as its capacity will go up by around 35 to 40% in the middle of FY26. And the management has indicated that the CAPEX will be funded via internal accruals. Well, the company is a net cash company and they are due to receive close to 350 crores as compensation for the Utkal Sea coal mines. Infa is confident of holding margins at 20% odd 
and going by the quarterly EBITDA run rate, they are on course to hit an annualized EBITDA of around 620 to around 650 crores per annum. So it's trading at around four and a half times, which is par for the course, right? But there are upside triggers to the current EBITDA number in the coming years, and those three triggers are up for you on the screen. Well, we've completely run out of time on this edition of Inside Out. It's goodbye from Sonal and myself. Do write to us, tell us about companies you want us to discuss. We'll try to feature some of them on the show. Thanks a lot for watching.